All right, Maytag, an extra power button? What's that? What's up, what's up, what's up? Of course, it's me, your boy, Richie Rich, at Consumer Pond Support. Shoot another awesome video, cause that's what we do. Man, what's up, what's up, what's up? You know at Consumer Pond Support, we review appliances. Today, we're gonna focus on a 5.3 cubic feet, smart, capable, white, top load washing machine with extra power button, energy saver, made by Maytag. Again, it's a mouthful, but somebody got to do it, and I'm the man for the job. All right, so let's dive into this joint right now. We're on the Home Depot website. This is just the introduction to this particular machine. You can get it in two different colors or two different finish. You can get it in white, or you can get it in metallic slate. You can also get it as an agitator or an impeller, whatever is best for you. So we're going to talk about a little bit of, about this machine because this is just the intro portion to the machine. All right, let's find out what it can do. Power cleaning, all right? It says most powerful cleaning in its class, driven by heavy duty cycle with extra power button. All right, it says the extra power button, some stains dissolve best in hot water. It says others in cold. With the push of a button, Maytag's fight, fights both in a single load. The extra power button boosts a stain fighting performance on any wall cycle with a dual temperature all right it's also smart capable it said stay in control and manage your laundry from anywhere with optimum smart features all right it says use the maytag maytag app to remotely start or stop your appliance get end of cycle notification troubleshoot select issues appliances must be set to remote enable wi-fi app and connect subscription required all right so we love that they're a smart appliance again we're back to a lot of the deep fill all right deep fill option it says for more water when you want it select the deep fill option to fill the water basket with your choice of deeper water levels all right so we like that there built-in water faucet all right so this is similar to <clears throat> the samsung joint that we did is also similar to the whirlpool joint that we did is almost like a pre-treat station this one is called a built-in water faucet it says a built-in water faucet faucet is engineered for extra dirty use it to rinse away loose soils as clothes go in or fill the tub for up to a three hour soak before the cycle begins all right you also have quick quick wash cycles right they clean small loads, lightly sold loads in 30 minutes and extra high spin speeds. It has a 10 year warranty as far as that as well. So we're gonna dive into the 10 year warranty about the machine. It's also a Maytag commercial technology. All right, it says close, slow close glass lid. So we like the glass lid. Energy Star. All right, it says it's sanitized with OxyClean. It says sanitized with OxyCycle, removes 99.9% .9 of household bacteria. All right, so we like that there. The direct drive motor, we like that as well. Um, advanced control, um, vibration control that they have on this particular machine. So when we go into the lab and dissect this joint, man, we'll let you know exactly how this machine measure up to all the other appliances that we've reviewed so far. If you have any questions you want us to review an appliance for us, always check us out, man. Email us, let us know what you think. Any options or any questions that you might have, just let us know. We'll be able to help you guys out with that joint, all right? Of course, you already know what time it is, man. It's me, your boy, Richie Rich. At Consumer Prime Support. You help me, I help you, we both help each other. Till next time, I'm out of here, man. Peace.
man, what's up, what's up, man? I'm hoping that you guys enjoyed the intro to the Maytag Top Load Washing Machine, man. And of course, I'm hoping that you guys enjoyed the music. An old school feel that we added to this joint, man, because Maytag been around for a little minute. So this portion of the video, we're gonna talk about the functions and the features, all right? What can this appliance do? So let's dive into the video real quick, man, and talk about some of the functions and the features. All right, so of course we describe this as a top load wash machine. Of course, you can get it in multiple colors as well. So this is your control panel, all right? So this is how you interact with the appliance. You have different cycles that you can choose from as well. So we're gonna dive into that a little bit, but we want the video to roll so that you can actually see it. Um, so we kind of like that, of course. It got remote start, fabric softener, deep fill. So we're gonna get into all that as well so that you'll be able to see all of that good stuff. All right, so let the video roll. I'm gonna scroll back a little bit. We're gonna start off right there. So of course, on the left side, you have your normal slash regular. You have heavy duty, you have whites, you have sanitized with oxy, you have towels, you have bulky items, you have a custom cycle that you can use, you have a quick wash, you have delicates, you have wrinkle control, colors, drain and spin, and of course you have your clean washer with a fresh. All right, so that's your tub cleaning cycle there. That's something that we suggest that you do often. You're supposed to do it at least once a month, but we're gonna dive into that a little bit as well as the video continues to roll. All right, so we like the little digital display. It's kind of small, but you know, it is what it is. But of course you can see you have a deep fill. You have a remote enable. We talked about the fabric softener. You have different spin speeds that you can choose from as well. Your temperature, your soil, you have a delayed start, you have extra rinse, and of course you have your cycle signal. All right, so that'll tell you how loud your volume button is and everything else. And of course, where you says remote enable, that's an indication to let you know that it's a smart appliance and also have a Wi-Fi connect and all that type of stuff as well. All right, so we're gonna go back just about right there, diving into the owner's manual a little bit. All right, so we're gonna talk about the quick reference guide. We talked about, of course, the power button being number one, the signal knob, your extra power, your display. So that breaks down the appliance by each individual component, your start and pause, cycle options is number six, all that types of stuff, man. So um, we can dive into this journey a little bit more so that we can see what we actually have, all right? So, all right, so we're gonna start here. All right, so the display shows the time required for the cycle to complete factors such as load size, water pressure, uh, may affect the time shown in the display, tightly packed loads on balance. It says loads or excessive suds may cause the washer to adjust cycle time as well. All right, one of the things that they have here is add a garment. It says when add a garment is lit, you may open the lid, which automatically pause the cycle. All right, and add items. It says to resume, close the lid, and hold the start slash pause button to start the washer again. All right, so that's what that is all about, the add a garment there as well. Of course, you got your start and pause, that's number four. You have your cycle modifiers, and it says all not all modifiers are available um, on all cycles. Of course, you have a spin, right? So we're gonna talk about that, of course, you're gonna see that in the digital display. This digital display. It says touch to modify the cycle's available spin speeds. You have off, medium, and fast. Uh, your temperature, all right, so it says touch to modify uh, the cycle's available temperatures. You have tap cold, cold, cool, warm, and hot. All right, the difference between uh, the tap cold is your traditional cold, so there's no warm water or hot water added to it. With these new machines, cold is not really cold unless it specifically say tap cold or um, if it's hot, it's gonna say very hot or extreme hot, something like that to tell you the difference between your standard hot and um, a regular hot, all right? Your standard hot and the extreme hot, that's the difference between the two. Um, because again, energy efficient, they're trying to save you a lot of money, save you a lot of energy, so they're mixing the hot and the cold water on a lot of these cycles, so it's not as hot as it used to. You have your soil, soil that says, touch the modify cycles of available soil levels Increase soil level for heavily soiled items and decrease soil level for lightly soiled items. Extra light, light, normal, heavy, extra heavy. All right, so that's just soil depending on the texture of your clothes, how dirty it is, stuff like that. That's what that is for. Um, cycle options. So these are some of the options that you might have here as well. 
you have it says not all options are available on all cycles so you want to consider that but you do have your deep fill it says deep fill it says touch to add more water to the washer from the cycles auto sense auto sense level auto medium high and max fill again we've noticed this on a lot of the washing machines we've been doing recently because what happens a lot of people have been frustrated with the limited amount of water inside the machine and the manufacturers have heard you guys all right so now they've decided to make sure each washing machine just about have a deep fill because again traditionally i'm a traditionalist man so i like to see a whole bunch of water i like to see the agitator even though it might not look like it's washing it is washing. I need my water, I need my soap, and I need my agitator. This Impella and this limited amount of water is not gonna do. All right, so I'm glad they started doing that. And again, a lot of them you can add to the different cycles as well to make sure that you increase the water. So that's good. Remote enable, we told you this originally, it's a smart appliance as well. It says touch each time you want to remotely control via the Maytag app. A lot of these appliances have their own apps so you can communicate with the apps as well. It says follow the instructions in the get the get the Maytag app and get connected section below for more details. Opening the lid causes remote enable. All right, it says opening the lid cancels. I'm sorry, remote enable. All right, so that's one of the things there because they're smarter, right? So you'll be able to communicate with your appliance with actually not being either if it's upstairs or in the basement or wherever you have it on the first floor, second floor. You don't have to actually be in those rooms to actually communicate with the appliance, which is dope. I like it, you know. Um, fabric softener, of course, you have touch the lid. Um, it says touch to let the machine know when you have added fabric softener to the dispenser drawer. You have your delay start, right? It says touch to delay the start of the wash cycle for up to 12 hours. Extra rinse, that's um, pretty good there, but that, they normally have that on most of the older machines as well. It says touch to automatically add a second rinse available on most cycles. All right, it says cycle signal. It says touch to turn the end of the cycle on or off and adjust the tone volume when a button is touched. All right, so that's what that is all about there. All right, so we didn't dissect some of that joint. We're going to let this video roll, man. And some of this you're going to actually see in the video when we're communicating back and forth, using the machine, turning the dial knob, um, that you can actually see that as well. So that's, of course, remote able, remote start. So we're going to let this roll because we actually started using it a little bit so you can actually see it as you turn the cycle the different settings start to change the numbers start to change you have your different spins right so this is where we are if you want um, deep fill right you have different settings that you can choose from that auto medium we just discussed that right um, we also have the fabric softener right you can turn it on or off which is cool I like that extra rinse if you want to do that of course we talk about the temperature and the soil there as well all right so don't want to get ahead of myself on here so i'm just let this rock again this thing just keep going but we want to continue to do what we do best all right so let that rock let that roll all right so we got that there all right so we're going to rock and roll um talk about different portions of the machines all right so let me get this together of course you have your liquid bleach when you look at the washing machine, you gotta know the symbols. Trust me, I'm, I'm saying this and it sounds like I'm trying to make people feel inferior or feel as though you don't know what you're doing. I'm telling you, you didn't been in this business, I've been in this business long enough and you notice that some people don't know what they're doing, right? So I've seen people where actually they put fabric softener where the detergent should be or they put fabric softener in the liquid bleach and they wonder why the machine is not working properly. But of course you wanna make sure you put liquid bleach um, right here you have your latch of course as well that's the latch and then one of th one of the things that we like about this appliance it says your choice of two washers all right so you can have the agitator or the impeller all right so it's up to you depending on the model that you have it says twist the rub against clothes and loosen uh, soils it says rub clothes against each other to clean them all right so that's where we are so this is a picture of the impeller and we're going to show you a little bit of the actuator as well so they're going to be both of those um but we're going to actually dive into the portion where we're talking about load requirements all right because we're going to show you guys or teach you guys or help you guys to load your washing machine according to the manufacturer all right so let's dive into that load requirements it says for best performance it is recommended that to load items by dropping them in loose heaps evenly 
around the wash plate and agitator. It says do not lay items length wise around the wash plate or agitator. All right, so they're giving you examples how to do it. You want to make sure the clothes are loose and not piled together. Because look, let's be honest. I used to back in the day, just take my, my clothes, you know what I mean, and just dump it in the wash machine. You can't do that. That's not going to help the wash machine. All right, so you want to think about that as well as you load the appliance. All right, so make sure that you're loading the appliance properly. We like that as well. That's really good. Um, they have more water you want you want with so they're talking about the max fill so we can just go over some of this stuff a little bit as you see here number one it says sort and uh, sort and load laundry we see that of course you want to make sure you use he soap all right got to be use that touch power to turn on the washer select desired temperature settings so this going through step by step how you actually turn the appliance on all right, it has auto sensing and deep fill, so we can talk about that a little bit. It says more water when you want. It says wash system with deep fill wash model. All right, so gonna zoom in a little bit so you guys can see that a little bit more. It says auto sensing and deep fill. It says the washer will adjust the water level to optimum amount for a high efficiency wash of the detected load size. Touch deep fill to add more water to the wash load. It says there are four levels of deep water, auto, media, auto medium, high, and max fill. Um, it says not all levels available in all cycles. And it says as the washer dampeners and moves the load, the level of the items will settle in the basket. This is normal. And it says does not indicate that more items should be added. Important. It says you will not see a washer basket full of water as with your past agitator style washer. It says it is normal for some of the load to be above the water level. All right, so we like that. All right, so looking at from the difference between the actuator and the impeller, you can see them both depending on the water level. We like that. All right, so that's pretty cool. So let's rock. And we're going to go into the dispenser and all that stuff later as well. But we're going to dive into the cycle guide. All right. This is one of our favorite parts because it helps us um, to break down how to use the appliance, what the cycle, what are some of the settings, what can you put in there. So we're going to dive into that right now. It says setting shows are selected for that cycle. It says factory default settings are shown in bold. Once you select a cycle that default modifies or the previous set modifiers for that cycle will be shown in the display LCD. For best fabric care, choose the cycle that best fits the load being washed. Not all cycles and options are available in all models. Please refer to the garment label instructions for best care. All right, so items to wash. When we're talking about heavy duty, over soiled garments, items that need additional cleaning effort. All right, the temperature on here, of course, this is your default setting is hot. Soil level is extra heavy. Spin, of course, is fast and water level is medium. Sig cycle details, it says use this cycle for heavily soiled or sturdy items. Water level sensing process may take longer for some items than others because they will absorb more water than other fabric types. All right, colors, bright or dark and colored casual and mixed loads. All right, of course, you got the default setting being cool, soil level heavy, fast, medium. It says use the cycle to wash dark and colors, including mixed loads and active wear. Again, we stress this a lot on a lot of the videos that we do when we're talking about wash machines. You want to make sure that whatever it says on the cycle, just use it for that. If it says towels, just put towels in there. Yes, you can probably use towels in normal if, it, if it's recommended on a cycle chart. All right, you can do that. But most of the times I like to just keep it consistent and just whatever it says on the label, that's what it goes, that's what I go with because it makes it simpler and easier for everybody to use. All right, bulky items. All right, so one of the things as technicians we always tell our customers, man, it's not really good to put a comforter inside the machine um, because it absorb a lot of the water, it could damage the machine. And most of the times when people are washing comforters, they don't really normally put one in there. All right, they might add a towel, they might add some sheets. So that makes the machine work a lot harder. It damages your machine, it bangs all over the place, makes a lot of loud noises. So you wanna be uber careful when you're actually loading the machine on bulky items. So let's see what it says. Large items such as sheets, sleeping bags, small comforters, jackets, small washable rugs. You can use that in there. 
Use the cycle to wash large items such as jackets and small comforters. The washer will fill with enough water to wet down the load before the wash portion of the cycle begins. And it says uses a higher water level than other cycles. All right. Another cycle that we want to dive into is the sanitize with Oxy. It says heavily soiled color fast fabrics. Of course, the temperature is hot. Soil level extra. Spin is fast. Water level is medium it says use this cycle to eliminate 99.9% .9 of bacteria when using conjunction with oxy additives it says preset cycle settings must be used to achieve proper sanitation it says be sure to add an oxy product to the basket before starting cycle all right so sanitize with oxy again with what's going on with everything with germs everyone i'm telling you they're adding these features on here is 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 it's much needed, especially in this day and age. You want to make sure that your clothes are clean properly. If you have babies, brand new babies, you want to make sure their clothes are sanitized as well. If you have any issue of allergen, you want to make sure that's sanitized properly as well. So they are catering a lot of these machines to um, people's needs. And that's one of the things that we like about these products these days. They are a lot smarter. All right. So we like that as well. Drain and spin, rinse and spin. These are cycles that you can actually use. Um, just if you want to add an additional spin, it says swim swimsuits and items requiring rinsing without detergent. All right, so um, that's what you have there. Um, normal cycles, it says cotton, linens, and mixed garment loads. It says use this cycle for normally sold cottons and fabric and mixed fabric loads. All right, wrinkle control, that's something that we can look at. It says non iron fabrics per permanent press and synthetics. All right, that's good there. It says use the cycle to wash loads for non-iron fabrics such as sports shirts, blouses, casual business clothes, permanent press, and blends. So we like that. All right, we really like that. Um, I don't see an athletic wear, so I'm going to go with where it says sports wear. That's where you would go with their wrinkle control because those are made a little bit differently. So it says sports shirts. All right, so I will probably go with that. Or you could probably do it in normal, all right, depending on what, how it's made. You have your delicates for machine wash, silks, hand wash, fabrics. Use this cycle to wash lightly soiled items, indicating machine washable silks or gentle cycle on the care label. Place small items in mesh garment bags before washing. It says this cycle uses a higher preset water level. All right, quick wash. Lightly soiled, small size, mixed garments, loads. All right, we like that. Use this cycle to quickly wash lightly soiled garments in small loads. The quick wash cycle uses shorter periods of more intense washing to clean items quickly. Clean washer with a fresh, no clothes needed. All right, it says use this cycle every 30 washes to keep the inside of the washer fresh and clean. It says this cycle uses a higher water level. Use with a fresh. All right, washer cleaner tablet or liquid Clorox bleach to thoroughly. It says use with a fresh washer cleaner tablet or liquid Clorox bleach thoroughly clean the inside of the washer. This cycle should not be interrupted. See washer care. It says important do not place garments or any other items in the washer during the clean wash with a fresh cycle. Use this cycle with an empty basket. All right, so you want to make sure you clean your machine at least once a month. All right, because you have to understand that um, your machine builds up with a lot of um, lint and minerals from your clothes, from the water. It damages the machine. So you want to make sure you do this periodically. Set every 30 loads. So you can do that. Or you can do it, again, every 30 loads is, every, is once a month. So you can do it once a month. Depending on how often you're cleaning and washing or using your wash machine, um, it's standard is every 30 months. But if you're washing clothes two or three times a day, you might want to reconsider that and do a little bit more. All right, because I had an issue similar to that. All right, so we got towels. Here we go right here. Towels, jeans, casual, mixed loads, sturdy fabrics. Provides additional water and alter, alter, alternating wash action for heavily soiled mixed loads. Heavily soiled with fabrics. Whites. It says this cycle when used with Clorox bleach improves whitening or soiled white fabrics. All right, heavily soiled fabrics when you're doing the soak cycle this uh, it says use this cycle to soak small spots of set in stain on fabrics the washer will use intimate agitation and soaking after time has expired water will drain but the washer will not spin the cycle is completed all right cool so you have that there that is the actual portion of the washing machine where we're talking about 
the cycle guide man i love looking at the cycle guide because you learn a lot when you're dealing with the cycle guide man it teaches you how to load the machine with some of the best cycles there so we're going to go talk do this a little bit with a dispenser let that roll for a second i just missed it all right so let that roll right there you have your, your detergent dispenser you have your detergent of course you see the line that says max you have your softener which is on your right and it has a max of course you don't want to exceed that line all right so let's dive into the owner's manual a little bit see what it says up here um it says add he laundry products to dispenser all right has to use he soap it has to have the he logo the he logo that you see here stands for high efficiency you want to make sure that you actually do that all right you want to make sure that you actually do that so um, outside of that that is it you're not really getting much there but we can talk about the little faucet button when it comes to it there that's here on the uh, all the way to the far left all right so of course like we said you can get it in multiple colors and this is the faucet so let's dive into that real quick rinsing before running a wash cycle all right it says water faucet operation it says press the faucet button once to turn on it says to turn the faucet off press the button again faucet would automatically shut off after 10 minutes or when max water level is reached it says water will automatically drain if water level becomes too high or if the lid is lift up open for 10 minutes all right rinsing before running a wash cycle all right so it's again this is similar to the lg one we did uh, i'm sorry the samsung one we did the whirlpool one that looks similar to this um, it's like a pre-treat statement, a pre-treat station that allows you to allow water to come in so you can rinse stuff off before you actually start it. So we like that. All right, so that's pretty cool. We haven't talked about the bull stain fighting, fighting. So we're gonna go to that real quick. Let me go back to the beginning of this video um, so that we can see that. And that's what that is. When it's highlighted like that, that's telling you that's the uh, that's the uh, the extra power. All right, so. We're gonna pause that there so you can actually see that. Extra power, talk about that for a little bit. It says extra power option. It says press the knob to select extra power. When extra power is active, the cycle control knob will illuminate. Extra power will increase cleaning power in the cycle selected, all right? That's new, I like that. That's pretty tight, I like that joint. Um, so if you wanna do that, extra cleaning, extra power, you can actually select that. It's like a bull stain fighting, all right? So that's on some um, cycles, not all, not all, all right? So cool, let's go back to where we was. Cause I just had to dive into that, so I didn't wanna miss it. All right, so let's let that joint rock for a second. So we talked about the dispenser there as well. Um, so this machine, again, it's a uh, top load unit. You can get it with the glass, so you can actually see inside the unit. You can see the agitator, um, or you can get it in the impeller, so you see both. We talked about the liquid bleach right there as well. That's the door latch, all right? So again, it has symbols on it to indicate and let you know exactly what is what on this particular unit. So this is how it looks when you got the white one. Of course, we like the glass, so you can actually look inside the machine while it's operating so you know exactly what's supposed to take place when you're doing this machine. All right, so we're actually wrapping up this video, man, because this is just about it. All right, so it doesn't have a lot of functions and features inside this machine. We did the best we can with what we have. So I'm hoping that you guys enjoy this joint. So we're going to dive into the next portion of the video. You already know what time it is, man. It's me, your boy, Richie Rich, at Consumer Punch Report. We're going to check out the rest of this joint, man. You know we're in the lab working, getting it in. Peace. All right, so for this portion of the video, we're going to focus on the warranty 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 the manufacturer warranty for this uh 5.3 cubic feet top low wash machine by maytag all right so right now we're on the home depot website and that's the site that we're going to use I always scroll down at the bottom man they got some interesting stuff for you guys as well as you can see where it says info and guides it talks about the warranty the measurement guide instructions and assemble installation guide specification energy guide use and care manual as well so this part of the video we're going to tap into the warranty and find out what's the manufacturer warranty for this maytag wash machine all right it says attach your receipt here proof of purchase is required to obtain warranty service please have the following information available when you call the customer experience center name address phone number uh, model number serial number as well 
Um, clear uh, detailed attack description of the problem proof of purchase including dealer or re retailer name and address all right one of the key components you always want to make sure that you have when you get an opportunity write down the model number and the serial number inside the owner's manual um, so you'll be able to put it somewhere safe if you happen to need it all right so that's cool there so let's dive into the warranty it says it has a first one year manufacturer warranty and it also has a second through a 10 year warranty so we're going to call that the 10 year warranty all right so let's figure out what it is that we're getting for the first year limited warranty parts and labor for one year from the date purchase when this major appliance is installed operated and maintained according to the instructions attached to or furnished with the product maytag brand of whirlpool corporation or whirlpool canada lp hereafter maytag will pay for factory specified parts and repair labor to correct defects in material or workmanship all right and it says that existed with this major appliance was purchased or at its sole discretion replaced the product it says in the event of the product replacement your appliance will be warranted by the remaining term off the original unit's warranty period all right so of course we got your standard one year manufacturer warranty that is pretty common that's typical now you have your second through your 10 year or your 10 year warranty on two parts let's figure what that is warranty drive motor and wash basket only labor um, not included so the parts would be covered it says in the second through the 10 years from the date of original purchase when this major appliance is installed operated and maintained according to instructions attached or furniture so i just read all that so i'm not going to keep reading all that so let's go back down to here it says this limited 10-year warranty on the below name only and does not include repair labor the drive motor and the wash baskets side walls only all right so the wash basket i'm thinking you're talking about the basket that you put your clothes in but it's saying side walls only that's a little bit confusing on my end so i'm not really sure what that is there so what you can do of course when you purchase this appliance you can call maytag just to get some information on um what's what's their definition of the side walls only so that you'll be able to know exactly what's covered under the 10-year manufacturer warranty but either way that it's still good you're getting a 10-year warranty on the wash basket i know it's the basket you put your tub in it's the side walls only that's uh, um really confusing um drive motor that's always common now that you're getting a 10-year warranty on the motor so that is good so according to the maytag through the manufacturer you're getting a one-year warranty um, both parts and labor and you're also getting a 10 year warranty on the drive motor and the wash basket um, and that's the the parts that's covered not the labor all right so of course they always have stuff that's not covered so you can also pause this video as well if there's any information that you'll need of course you can contact maytag their number website is all that stuff is being the owner's manual and we also put this in the description box as well so you have some useful information all right so you got disclaimer of implied warranties disclaimer of representations outside of the warranty it says limitation of remedies exclusion of incidents and consequential damages so you have a lot of information there and it has it in different languages if you want to see that as well um, again all this stuff will be listed in the owner's manual but we like the warranty that you're getting from maytag for this particular appliance you're getting the um the warranty that's above average and we really like that so once we finish out dissecting this appliance you already know we're going to give it our grade and let you know exactly how we feel about each individual component so right now we are out of here man of course it's me your boy rich bitch i am out of here man let's make this happen peace all right so for this portion of the video we're going to focus on the price how much it's going to cost you might cost you a little might cost you a lot either way it's going to cost you all right so right now we're going to start off with our home depot website we're going to go to also lowe's and we're going to go directly to best buy afterwards all right so like we expressed before if you watch the intro portion of the video this machine comes in two different colors you can get it in a metallic slate or you can get it in white you can also get it with the actuator or the impeller all right so it's all up to you there so right now we're going to start off with the metallic slate price originally originally is 11.49 they're saving you about 10 percent right now and you're looking at um 10 percent of course saving is 115 total price you're looking at 1034 
if you decide that you want to get the metallic slate all right you do have a payment plan or a home depot card that you can use that's 173 dollars for the next six months if you want to finance of course that portion of this um, video or that portion of the financing is up to you we do not instruct you on that portion of it we only focus on the price so we must say that in every video and also right now it's on sale giving you 10 percent price is subject to change so by the time that we finish and wrap up the video going into the lab sometimes the sale might be uh, for a short period of time so you do want to understand it as well but you want to make sure you do your diligence and make sure that you search around do your research to make sure that um, you have the proper information so that you can get the best price for you all right so um, does it matter if it's in the actuator and Pella the price let's see no it does not all right the only difference that does change if you have pay attention to our videos is that the cubic feet is a little bit um as far as the actuator take away from the space um when you're using the actuator it is 5.2 when using the impeller it is a 5.3 all right so that's one of the changes that you'll see there as well also the model number has changed on here as well um when you change it from a metallic steel um to white it changes the model number as well so you want to keep that in mind all right let's go into the white right now originally the white is 1049 that was the original price saving you 10 percent of 105 you're looking at 944 as far as the price right now for this particular wash machine again the impeller um it's a 5.3 when we switch it to an actuator um it's giving you a 5.2 the price does not change at all the difference the difference in the price between the actuator and the impeller again i'm glad they started going back to these original machines with the actuate the actuator right and incorporating the impeller if you want to pick whichever one you like because people were frustrated at just using that little impeller it took a little minute to get used to and people probably was really annoyed that they took it away so now they didn't brought it back to give you the option to choose between the two but of course you already know this is the price portion of the video we'll talk about that when we get to the functions and features but this price you're looking at 944 when you're talking about the home depot website all right so that's one thing that we like this so we're going to jump directly to lows all right so lows right now again we got to go a little bit deeper um originally it's 11.99 so let's see what happens and this is for the white uh, metallic stainless steel let's see if that changed it was 12.99 man so it says view lower price in cart um it says ends august the 25th all right so that's the stuff that we've mentioned before these prices tend to change so we're going to add it to the cart so that we can get it a um an idea how much it costs all right so for the white you're looking at 10.79 all right so the price is higher at lows so of course if we were doing an, uh, an evaluation of this appliance trying to get the best price you would go with home depot because it's cheaper that makes logical sense all right you do have um different payment plans that you can do as well if you want to go there that is up to you um that is provided through lowe's um i know they have a lowe's card that they normally give you sometimes you can if it's not on here because we normally will see that so that's why we mention it but if it's not on here where you can actually see it you can actually contact lowe's themselves to see if they have any information on that if that's where you decide to go all right so they're calling it the chrome shadow right <laughs> so you got a metallic slate you got a chrome shadow depending on what site you go to but again it's the same machine so let's look at the metallic slate you're looking at 1169 all right so again when you're dealing with the home depot and compression the lows home depot is cheaper all right so that's probably where that's definitely where i would go not probably that was definitely where i go because it is cheaper all right so let's go to another site to see what we can find here um on this price portion of the video we're going to go to best buy because there's two different um models different model numbers so we'll give you that as well so let's see what we got so far is best buy right now you're looking at 1034.99 for um this is the metallic metallic steel um if you have a payment plan that you decide that you want to do it you want to finance this appliance you're looking at 5750 for the next 18 months if you want to do that through um best buy all right so 
Right now it's saying it's unavailable nearby and that's one of the things that you want to look at when you're purchasing appliances. If you like one that you like or see one that you like, you can always shoot us an email. We'll help you out to just give you some information on it, tell you exactly what are some of the common issues that do go bad. We have customers that communicated back and forth with us through email um, or even through the YouTube um, just to ask us a question, what's the best appliance? And we go in, man, and give them a lot of information so that people could choose what's best for them. So if it's not just about washing machine, there's any appliance out there that you need help with. All right, so right now you're looking at $1034.99. And again, remember, always keep in mind price is subject to change. And again, check availability because it's not always available, unfortunately. All right, so that's just where we are right now. So if we look at the 5.2 cubic, all right, so this is the white. Um, so that's more than likely the one in it with the impeller. Um, I'm sorry, the actuator, because it's uh, the cubic feet is smaller. You're looking at 944.99, all right? So that's a little bit cheaper than your lows there as well. If you want to do the payment plan, it's 52.50, right, per month, so you can do that. So again, the average price that you're gonna spend for this unit, man, you can, you can say it's about $1,000, right? Depending on which one you get, one is gonna charge you about a stack, the other one is gonna probably charge you about 1100 to 1200 Of course, we don't factor in taxes because it's all different for whatever state that you're in, all right? But again, roughly between 1000 to about $1,200 for this particular machine. This is the price portion of the video, man. And of course, it's me, your boy, Richie Rich, as we dissect this Maytag machine, man, going to the lab, man. Until next time, we out of here, man. Peace. All right, so for this portion of the video, we're gonna focus on the parts. All right, so one of the things that we try to help the customers with is just to try to give you some common issues that typically goes bad when dealing with this particular wash machine or appliances in general, and how much it's gonna cost you if a repair technician come out. Because more than likely, man, each appliance, you're gonna get it fixed at least once or twice, no matter how uh, much it costs, unless um, the job that needs to be done as far as repairing it is just so high that it forces you to get a new one. All right, so our example and estimate that we're gonna use for this uh, particular video, our labor is gonna be $150. If we happen to need a, a helper for any parts that we gotta install, then we charge you a $60 for the, for the helper. And of course, a, it's gonna be a slight markup on the part for our examples that we use in our video. All right, so the site that we're gonna use today is searspartsdirect.com. Right now, I didn't put the model number in. This is for the actual white. Um, machine that you see here as well and this is the 5.2 cubic so it's going to be the one with the impeller so we're going to dive into some of the parts that you might see here on this particular machine all right so we're going to dive into where it says tub and cabinet all right so i'm hoping that you guys will be able to see that as well so you have a couple parts here you can choose from man you have the cabinet you have the lid you got the um the water valve the drain holes so we're gonna go really in depth with a lot of this that you see here so that we um, understand what the um, price is gonna be for each part. I'm hoping that the parts are available. All right, so the washer lid, that's number two. So we're gonna scroll up a little bit so that you guys be able to see that as well. That's number two, the actual glass lid, right? The lid that you can actually see through there or the window, some of them call it a window. You're looking at 206.29. This is not a common issue that typically goes bad, but if it happens to crack or break and you happen to need a new washer lid, you're looking at 206.29. All right, so with a markup, you're gonna spend at least 300 and something dollars for this part. All right, then you gotta factor in labor, but this is not a common issue. All right, so you have your washer lid strike. That's number three. Um, I'm hoping I'll be able to find that here because I can't see it on here. Uh, number three, number three. All right, so that's your lid strike. Um, that tends to rust over time, but as you can see, the part is 1407 and it's on back order, right? So if you happen to need that, that's that um, really cheap part. It's not going to cost you much. Your hinges can wear out over time. That's number five and number six, right? So you have one for the left, one for the right. You're looking at at least 50 bucks each. So if you happen to replace the hinge or the tech replace the hinge, he might charge you $100 for the part. Labor, you're looking at 150 
total parts and labor you're looking at at least 250 bucks to replace the hinges but of course if you need two hinges it might cost you 200 dollars for the hinges all right 150 so it all depends on the technician and the company that comes out and their actual prices all right so just keep that in mind but the hinges rust over time so it normally happens 10 years later 10 to 15 years later from you opening and closing the lid and the machine deteriorates over time all right so it's not a common issue i have not replaced a whole bunch of hinges on these machines at all all right so keep that in mind we got number nine which is your top lid that's number nine here right not a common issue but if you happen to need it is 206 29 all right not a common issue so we can actually move on from there washer electronic control board all right that's number 10 uh let's dive into that real quick number 10 number 10 is a common issue control board goes bad on this particular unit um so you're looking at 300 bucks so if we mark that up man we gotta mark it up to at least four so you're looking at at least 400 bucks in in parts then you got to factor the labor at 150 bucks. So you're looking at at least $550 to repair this machine if you happen to need a control board. At least, at minimum, that's what you're going to spend. All right. So again, with the price of this machine, that probably is going to be a good repair unless you just want to purchase a new one. Because remember, you're going to spend at least a stack for this appliance. That's half of how much of a new one like this costs. So you're more than likely you're going to get it fixed. We recommend you get it fixed as long as it's not over 70%. All right. So keep in mind. That's cool. All right. Let's keep it moving. Um, line filter. Like some of these, I'm just going to go through. No, I'm not much there. Not a common issue. Harness power. Dispenser. All right. These dispensers are not a common issue, man. Um they do not you can actually what normally happens is number nine which is the lid um that rust over time so the dispenser you can take you could clean out you got to be careful with it um, but they tend to rust that's normally like i said the machine deteriorates over time the dispenser not a common issue but if you happen to need one it's 1639 all right so that's good there Washer lid switch, common issue for the lid switch to short out, to break, to damage. You're looking at at least 9163. Right now we're saying that it's on back order and that's one of the things you wanna keep in mind as well. Appliances, um, you gotta check to make sure they're available. Parts, they're on back, over, back order. With everything that's been happening over the last year and a half, two years, stuff been pushed back. Manufacturers do not have parts. So it's difficult at times for for the technicians to get parts. It's difficult for you to find certain parts. They just don't have them anymore. So you wanna keep that in mind when your service technician come out. All right, you're looking at 9163. Part, let's say this part, I'm gonna charge a customer 150 bucks. Labor, you're looking at 150 bucks. For the lid, you're looking at at least 350 bucks, um, at least 300 bucks to get this done. All right, a minimum 300 bucks. So um, lid, again, door won't lock, stuff like that. Might give you an error saying there's a faulty fault code with the lid because the lid has to lock. All right, so you want to keep that in mind. Washer dispenser drawer. This is stuff that you can pull out. That's number 19. You can pull this stuff out, clean it out as well. They have one that's white. That's 7961. All right, so if the color change is going to be a little bit different. All right, so just keep that in mind. You have your switch, which is number 20. Um, that's the switch that you actually press in. So that you have your deep fill, that's 3285. Not a common issue. I haven't really replaced many of those. It's not a common issue, but if you happen to need one, because it's just like any other switch, switches do short out, switches do break. When you keep pushing them because they're plastic, you're looking at 3285. All right, so um, switch assembly number 20. All right, so that's the same thing, depending on which one it is that you need. All right, so you want to keep that in mind water valve common issue machine fills up with water overfill or don't fill up with water at all gives you an error code saying there's not enough water in the machine so if you happen to need a water valve which is a common issue you're looking at 94.99 we won't bump that up to at least 150 bucks and again i'm being generous labor 150 you're looking at, at least 300 bucks the minimum is about 300 bucks to get this unit fixed all right so you want to keep that in mind as well all right, so you have water valve, inlet valve, harness. 
All right, so you got different ones there as well. The harness, then you got the water valve here. So we're right in this portion of the video that we, uh, the parts portion of this video that we just did. All right, you got your cabinet, wraps. Again, cabinets don't normally go bad, but if you happen to need a cabinet, you're looking at $322.90. Um, that's gonna be more than that. They might charge you at least um, close to 500 bucks for the part. Um, they're gonna charge you more for the labor because you got to take the whole entire unit apart and put it back together So if that's gonna be the issue or if they need a help or you're looking at, at least maybe 200 bucks in labor um, 60 for a helper depending on how uh, detailed the job is so that's already 260 bucks in labor if you happen to need that I'm telling you the cabinets don't normally go bad. So you should be perfectly fine All right, don't have a lot of issues with the cabinets going bad but it's not a common issue, so that's why we're not going to really give it too much example there. All right, washer cabinet bracket. Again, not an issue for the bracket to wear out, but that bracket is 158.18. All right, so that's where we are. So let's get into the joint. Drain holes, common issue. Drain holes get punctured. Drain holes get damaged or wear out. You're looking at 18.99. All right, another common issue that we don't normally mention with your washing machine is always you want to check your washing machine hoses. The hoses that connect and supply water to the back of your machine, you're supposed to replace those every five years. All right, you can get them at Home Depot, you can get them at Lowe's, you can get them just about anywhere. Just go to those local stores, buy water hoses, they're like 20 bucks, and put them on if you're mechanically inclined. All right, because you don't want them to rush. You don't want them to leak, especially if you're on vacation. You come back, you hold an entire home or basement or upstairs is flooded with water because they're rusted. All right, so keep that in mind. So I think that's it for that. All right, so we got good information there on that. Uh, we're going to move on to the next portion of this video where we're going to talk about the actual actuator. Uh, you got your tub cover number one, actuator number four, and end up your tub there as well. All right, your tub cover you're looking at, that's number one. That is 7003, right? If you happen to need a new tub cover, that's what it is. Tub covers don't normally go bad. Um, I might have replaced a tub cover in my whole entire life of doing washing machines and dryers less than five times. They don't go bad, all right? So not a common issue. Wash plate screw, they rust, they wear out because of the, the, uh, the water. Uh, the detergent that you put inside the machine so keep that in mind agitators do wear out they do break you're looking at 58 63 if you happen to need one of those all right so let's say that part is a hundred dollars labor you're looking at 150 total you're looking at, at least 250 bucks all right washer basket all right so this is the washer basket you're looking at two three two three three one zero two hundred thirty three dollars and ten cents all right, this is a part that's covered under the manufacturer warranty for the 10 years, just a part. So right now, if you're looking at this particular unit, Maytag is saving you in at least $233.10. All right, more than likely it's gonna be, it used to be more than that. So it all depends on where you go at, where you get it from, it might be at least $300. All right, so let's say if you happen to need that part and it's not under the 10 year warranty, at least $300 for the part. Labor is gonna be a little bit more because you, you, the, the, what it takes to replace this part and you might need, need seals as well, so that's another issue, depending on how bad it is and what's going on with it. But let's just say you happen to need just this part alone, you're looking at 300, labor, you're looking at at least 200, so we're talking about at least 500 bucks to replace that tub, but remember, you're saving some money as well. Your outer tub, um, not a common issue, but it can leak. More than likely, it's plastic, so it gets punctured. Um, so you can have issues there, but you're looking at 316.61, not a common issue. All right, when we're talking about the damper assembly, you're talking about the suspensions. Suspensions wear out in these machines where they are banging all over the place, making loud noises, real aggressive. The machine is moving, so that's why you got to make sure that you load the machine properly. We'll teach you that when we go into the functions and the features so when you're doing this part of that you want to remember that as well to load the wash machine properly but again that is a common issue where the suspensions wear out man the suspensions wear out that's number 10 they wear out you're looking at 7395 it looks like that's only one that's only one it doesn't look like it comes as a kit if it comes as a kit then of course awesome 
If it comes individually, you're talking about at least $100 a piece and you have four of them in there. So that's 400 bucks, then you're talking about labor, you're looking at least 550. If it's just this by itself, you're looking, I would say the part's gonna be 150, labor you're looking at 150, you're looking at 300. So it all depends on the model, all right? But this, I think they come as an assembly. I've never think, yeah, they come as an assembly. So I would go with come with assembly. I'm like 95% sure it comes as an assembly. So you're looking at at least 300 bucks for that. All right, so that's good there. Pressure switch holes. These don't normally go bad, but they normally get clogged up over time. So what happens is your machine detects the water level and the pressure on the side of the machine. There's a hole in the side of the machine that this connects to. It sits on it like that. And the pressure from the water building up inside the machine communicate with the, with the switch and it fills up with water because of the air pressure that actually connects with the switch so it opens and closes depending on the pressure so it gets clogged up over time from again the lint in your clothes um builds up so what you want to do or the technician normally do if you happen to need it he'll just clean it up and uh properly reconnect it to make sure that it's connected properly but if you happen to need it you're looking at 22.99 all right cool there hopefully that explains everything there try not to get too technical but it's kind of hard <laughs> all right let's go into this joint what we got this is your transmission another drain hose here all right so let's dive into that man see what we got all right drive assembly that's number one two thirty five fifty one all right so this is not the actual motor all right the motor is here that's number six that's covered this is a common issue where that transmission wears out all right, so we do uh, this form of transmission we do not like. It's similar to the Whirlpool one. It's similar to the GE one. For some reason, this machine, if you look at it, it's similar to the Whirlpool machine. We're going to put that in the description box so you can actually see it. It looks just like it. All right, so you want to keep that in mind when you're purchasing an appliance. You want to look at a lot of the similarities because they look alike. If they look alike as far as features, um, the way they look and design, it's more than likely the same machine and they just put a different name on it. So Whirlpool will make it and they'll make one for Maytag, they'll make one for GE, and it's the same exact appliance, but they just got different names on it. So you want to keep that in mind, all right? So again, this transmission is a common issue. They go bad, seals wear out, where it leaks. I'm telling you, it's a common issue. I'm not a huge fan of it. Um, it wears out over time. Your machine will make loud noise. If you tilt the machine up, it splatters all over the place, so you can actually see that. But if you happen to need this part, you're looking at two thirty-five fifty-one. Off the top, you're gonna spend at least three hundred dollars for the part. Labor is gonna be at least two hundred bucks, so you're looking at at least five hundred dollars in repair to replace your drive assembly. All right, so that's where we are. Harness shield. Um, not a common issue stator that's number six that's your motor you're looking at 11320 that's covered under the 10-year warranty so they're saving you at least a hundred and something dollars but if you happen to need that part two hundred dollars for the part labor 150 you're looking at, at least 350 all right so that's where we are clutch not a common issue but it can happen it wears out um 5278 all right not a common issue there you got your wash clutch kit um, that could be an issue where that wears down, the gears on it wears down, you're looking at $27.99. So if you happen to need that part, they might charge you $100 for the part. Labor, you're looking at um, $150, so at least you're looking at $250, all right? So that's where we are. The rotor, that's $60.94. That's really cheap. That's not expensive, man. They run a little bit more than that. But if you happen to need that, it's $60.94. Um, sometimes they do replace the number six and number nine. Number six and number 11, I'm sorry, six and 11. So that's the rotor and the stator at times, they might replace both of those together. So if you're looking at 6094, if you happen to need the rotor, because the rotor can actually wear out, all right? So it's screwed underneath where the motor is, all this on top, and it can actually wear down. So you're looking at 6094. So if you happen to need that part, you're looking at, I'm gonna go with 100 bucks. Labor, you're looking at 150, so you're looking at almost about 250 bucks. Drain pump, common issue. All right, common issue for your drain pump to wear out, not drain, um, drain out properly, get a punctured hole in it. Sometimes there's coins in there, there's pins in there, so you want to be careful what's inside your pocket as well. You're looking at $124.70, so if we mark this up, at least $200 for the part labor, you're looking at $150, so you're looking at at least $350 as minimum as far as repair on this particular unit. 
all right you have your wash to tub hose again these hoses can be punctured but as you can see 23.99 not that expensive um dra washer drain pump hose 18.25 not expensive to replace the drain hose they typically normally more than likely just get clogged up all right so that's that's it as far as this portion in the video there so let's go to the console when we're dealing with the control all right so that's number one looking at 33626 that is the washer interface assembly all right again with these appliances man you got to keep in mind when you're dealing with a lot of these appliances control boards all that stuff is going to cost you some bread so number one right here is 336 26 if you happen to need it the buttons won't work it won't communicate it could be completely dead so if you need that part you're looking at 400 labor you're looking at at least 150 so you're looking at least 550 all right number three gives you just the console itself right so you might not you only need the top portion of it that normally don't go bad but we're looking at 116.25 all right so that's where we are there all right so you have your your harness and all that stuff console chill nut laundry appliance refrigerator rear all right so this is it man when you talking about the parts portion of this video man this is it for the maytag parts portion of this video you already know what time it is man if you happen to need any parts we're going to have this information in the video in the description box so you'll be able to look up whatever parts you might need as well for this particular appliance we always instruct you to shop around but this is the parts portion of the video man and we are out of here man so we can knock out the next portion of this video we out peace all right, so now we're going to focus on our overall review to let you know exactly how we feel about this top load Maytag wash machine, man. So we're going to start off right now and dive into the warranty. Warranty, warranty, warranty. The grade that we're going to give the warranty before we do that, of course, you already know, man, we got to talk about that for a little bit. So as far as the manufacturer warranty, you're getting your standard one year warranty, both parts and labor. They're also giving you a 10 year warranty that covers your drive motor and your wash basket. All right, just the parts, not the labor. All right, so they're saving you a couple hundred bucks. Um, if, it all depends on if you need the motor or the wash basket. Um, as far as the price for the part, they're saving you a couple dollars on that. So as far as our grade for the warranty, we really like it because they go above and beyond what their standard um, manufacturer warranty is at times. Sometimes they only give you a one year manufacturer warranty, but they're giving you additional warranty on additional parts. So as far as the grade, we're gonna give it a five. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. Cinco. All right, so let's focus on the next thing. Price, how much? It's gonna cost you. Might cost you a little, might cost you a lot. Either way, it's gonna cost you. Man, you talking about a price for this top load wash machine, don't forget it's a 5.3 cubic feet. Um, as far as the capacity of this machine, it got a lot of functions, a lot of features in this joint. So the average price that you're gonna pay for this unit, depending on the color that you get, you're gonna spend between $1,000 and $1,200 depending on the, the color. The white is closer to the thousand, the gray shadow is, is closer to the actual 1200 all right so as far as the price grade that we're going to get for this particular unit this is about average on how much you're going to spend for an appliance especially with the cubic feet that you have it being 5.5 um i'm telling you you want to spend some money on that and all the bells and whistles that comes with it so that's why we're giving an overall grade as far as the price grade we're going to give it a three uno dos tres three all right so now let's focus on the parts man cost per repair Let's talk about it for a second. Average cost per repair, you already know, man, it's gonna cost you about 300 and something dollars. So um, that's the standard, it seems like, for a lot of these appliances when we do these reviews, um, as far as the price that you're gonna pay for this particular machine. As far as the parts, they're not that expensive. Some of the parts are not expensive, and don't forget you also have a 10-year warranty that covers certain parts for 10 years, so we like that. But like the basic parts that commonly go bad, you're looking at your water valve, it's not that expensive. Um, the biggest issue with this appliance that we're talking about as far as the parts, we're talking about the transmission or the gear case. It is a common issue for this unit to break down, man. So um, as far as the parts grade that we're gonna give this unit, we're not satisfied with it because it's similar to the Whirlpool. It also similar to the GE. For these particular model appliance, the way that these gear cases are being made, 
they wear out a lot and they're not reliable. Um, some of the issues I've also seen speaking to different customers when we go out is that it doesn't spin all the way sometimes. So sometimes you do might have to instruct the customer and let's let them know exactly how to load the machine, what's best to use it, how to best to use it. And um, also it could be an issue with the machine. You do have the shifter that shifts the washer from wash to spin. That can be an issue there as well. So when we're talking about our overall parts grade, we are not happy with this unit, man. So. Woo, as far as the parts grade, we're gonna give it a two because it happens a little bit too frequently for us. And it's a major issue that does go bad with these appliances, man. These gear cases are either uh, wearing out where the bearings are wearing out or they actually leak. So they're not as sturdy as the LG or the Samsung unit as far as the transmission or the gear case that they're using. It's not as reliable, all right? So that's why we're gonna give it the grade of two. Uno. Dose. Let's talk about the functions and the features. Man, you know this is our favorite part of the appliance. I got my notes here, so I gotta look at it too. I forgot to mention that as well. But let's dive into this. This is a smart appliance, all right? So when we notice the appliance, you can remote start. You gotta connect to your Wi-Fi. You can also download a Maytag app to be able to communicate with the washing machine as well. So we like that. You have a deep fill. All right, we noticed the last few washing machines we've been doing, and right now when you look at a lot of these appliances, the deep fill is 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 a is a, a cycle setting that a lot of these appliances, a lot of these manufacturers are starting to incorporate because they see the need for it because most people do not like the washing machine with that little bit of water. You're gonna have to add some more water so that our clothes can be washed properly. All right, so we like that. And you can also adjust the deep fill with different settings. You can do it automatically where it does it auto, you have medium, you have high, or you have max. And that's one of the things that we also like as well. And of course it has an auto fill set cycle that fills up automatically depending on the, um, the, the, the clothes or the weight of the clothes when it senses the uh, the motion inside the washing machine. So you want to keep that in mind as well. It has an extra power, all right? So we show you guys the extra power. Check out the function portion of the video. It allows your machine to get an extra boost or extra power, all right? So what it says here is boost stain fighting. All right, so if you're looking for in a more aggressive cycle to clean your clothes a little bit more, you can actually um, start the machine or select the extra power op option, and that's one of the things that we love there as well. All right, so that's pretty cool. It also has the pre-treat station, or it's called the water faucet operation, where you're able to get water on the side of the machine so you can actually clean, the, clean your clothes with a little bit of steam. Some people used to like shout, from back in the day, you press the shout, clean the clothes out for those who are used to using that, man. But you can actually add water to the machine before you actually wash the machine. Before you wash your clothes, it's like a pre-treat station that we really like with the appliance. So I think we mentioned just about everything that we like on this machine, of course, man. Um, of course, you can also get it in the actuator or the impeller. The prices don't really change, but again, that's all up to you, depending on what it is that you would like. But of course, as far as our overall grade, when we're talking about functions and the features, we're gonna give it a five, single. All right, so let's dive into this, man. Let's get this grade, let's break it down. Warranty, five. Price, three. Parts, two. Functions and features, we give it a five. Overall grade, you're looking at a 15 divided by four. Man, you're looking at a 3.75. That is the actual grade for this uh, Maytag wash machine. And like I said, this is a wash machine that we're not really fond of and we would not recommend this appliance. We love certain portions of this machine, uh, certain um, part, parts of this machine. We love the functions and features. We love the warranty, but as far as durability and the parts, um, you gotta step your game up on that um, so that the machine lasts a lot longer, man. It's just not where it needs to be. Um, if you look at some of the reviews as well, customers are not happy with it, so we're gonna give it a 3.75. But you already know what time it is. It's me, your boy, Richie Rich, at Consumer Prime Support. You help me, I help you. We both help each other. You already know what time it is, man. Subscribe to the channel, don't forget. I'm out of here, man. Peace.